No time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about Tim Norman. But first, we got to go back in time. Way back in the day, you had Ike and you had Tina. Now, while Ike was throwing them hands, Tina was singing on stage. <gasps> Please tell me what's wrong. And in the background, you had the trio, the Ikeettes. One of them being Robbie Montgomery. She went on to have two sons, Andre and Tim Norman. Now, Andre did unfortunately die, but before he did, he had a son, Andre Jr. Now, Tim was in trouble with the law. He ended up doing 10 and a half years in prison for armed robbery. But that didn't stop him from getting out and dating basketball wife star Jennifer Williams. And rumors going around that he was dating Phaedra Parks. Now, in 1996, Robbie started a restaurant known as Sweetie Pies. So they definitely weren't hurt for money. June of 2015, Robbie's home was burglarized. Over $200,000 worth of cash and jewelry was stolen from her house, and everyone was thinking it was Andre, especially Tim. Now, Andre told everybody that he didn't do anything, but the pressure was really high, and especially coming from his own Uncle Tim, so he bounced. Now, Andre sent a text message to his grandma, Robbie, that said, I didn't do this. I think Tim did it, and he's trying to frame me. I don't feel safe. I'm not trying to duck you, but I can't come back. Now, with Andre out the way, Tim decided to make some new friends. One of those friends was oh, oh, Wally. Starting in 2014, Tim and Wally decided to start some insurance policies. Now, most of their applications were denied because he is not an immediate family member. However, Forrester's insurance came through. And in October of 2015, a $450,000 life insurance was placed on Andre's head with Tim being the sole beneficiary. Now, Tim decided to gather up his team. Introducing Terrica, the stripper. Travel, the shooter. Wally, the insurance guy. And Tim. On March the 14th, 2016, Andre was at a recording session inside of his home at 3964 Natural Bridge Avenue in St. Louis, Missouri. He got a text message to meet him outside. So he went outside, and it was there that he was shot by Travel Hill. Now, it didn't take too long for him to become a suspect, but he wasn't arrested until August of 2020. And while he was being a suspect, he was posting on Instagram things like, Innocent. Terrica claimed that she knew something was going to happen, but she didn't know Andre was going to get shot. So she only got three years. The shooter and the snitch, Travell, he got 32 years in prison. Wally, the insurance guy, he only got three years in prison. And Tim, I ain't never going back to prison. Norman, he got life in prison for the murder of his nephew. Also, there were rumors that were spreading around that he actually had a hit out on his own mom. I'm not sure if that was ever actually confirmed, but crazy, right? No time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about Thabo Bester. Born in South Africa, he was abused as a child. His grandma's friends used to abuse him, and so he tried to tell her. He was like, Grandma! That man's touching me. And this old saggy titty grandma was like, I don't care. So then Saggy Tits died, and the group home that he went into, someone else was abusing him. Now, when he grew up, he was scared of being raped, so he decided he was going to be the rapist. He got on Facebook, made some fake pages claiming to be a talent agent, and as women were coming in to be models, he was abusing and robbing them. Despite living this double life, he somehow got a girlfriend. She got flued out. He got a nice little bed and breakfast. They were doing the nasty. And then he told her, you ain't my girlfriend, I don't want you. So they got into an argument, and so he decided he was just going to go ahead and rob her. Now, while he was robbing her, she woke up, he got a knife, and he killed her. And then the next day, as he was leaving, he told the owner of the bed and breakfast, Hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, 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 don't go into her bedroom. It's after 2 o'clock. She's sleeping. And then he left. You would think because he murdered his girlfriend that he would stop, but no, no, he did not. But he was ultimately caught, and he was sent to life in prison. Now, my boy Thabo is an entrepreneur, so while he was in prison, he started a media empire. He told everybody that his name was Thomas Moseep, and he was super rich. He even tricked people into quitting their jobs to come and work for him. He started fake companies like Sky Digital and 21st Century Group. Do you see what they resemble? At the release party for his fake company, the elite South African public and celebrities were showing up. He was on video chat telling everybody that he was in New York. He's literally in a prison cell. But nobody could tell. Even the fact that he photoshopped his face on this body. Do y'all know who body that is? The body he photoshopped himself belongs to Michael B. Jordan. 
and nobody caught it. He was planning on this big fake conference called Women in Media. Guess who celebrities he said was supposed to show up? This man had Halle Berry and Taraji P. Henson on the roster. And nobody knew it was all fake. Now, my boy Thabo, he got tired of being in prison, so one day he set his cell on fire and burned alive. Thus ending the Facebook rapist. He's dead. Or so they thought. A couple months after he supposedly burned alive in his jail cell, this man was caught on camera grocery shopping. So the police were like, wait, who was that in the jail cell? They did a DNA test. It wasn't even Thabo! Then they realized the body that they found, the organs were already deteriorating, so they had put a dead body in a jail cell. And they still don't know who it belongs to. And then this other dude came out and he was like, I'm Thabo Bester. Turns out, Thabo Bester is not even this man's name. He stole somebody else's identity. We don't know who he is. At least I don't. Anyway, he's on the loose in South Africa, so crazy, right? No time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about Cameron Hogg. Cameron lives in Dallas, Texas, and for the last 10 years, he's been really stupid. Doing things such as, but not limited to, driving while intoxicated, fleeing a police officer, and murder. He also has a couple of family abuse things going on, and so for a little while, Cameron was in jail. Now, while he was in jail, he had a lot of time to reflect on his life choices, such as, but not limited to, where am I going in life? Who are my real friends? Am I a loser? The answers are nowhere, no one, and yes, you are a loser. Despite Cameron being a loser, he did have one person who technically was his friend. That person was Asia Womack. Being 10 years younger than Cameron, she graduated from Madison High School and she was a wonderful soul. Always wanted to smile, she also was a part of a youth group at her local church, and she played basketball. And those who knew her best would describe her as a whiz, as she could beat anybody on the court, male or female. Now, Cameron's a tough boy, and he was determined that if anybody could handle balls, it would be him. Because females aren't allowed to handle balls, not like Cameron. Cameron was so sure of how good he can handle balls that he decided that he wanted to take Asia on at a pickup game at the basketball court. So October the 3rd, 2022, at Terry Park in South Dallas, Cameron told Asia, hey, I can handle balls way better than you. Now, Asia's full of life, and this is her friend, so she was like, let's go ahead and do it. But now Cameron over here, he's rubbing the ball. He's touching the ball. He's admiring the ball. Completely fascinated with how much he can handle balls. And then the game started. And he had a hard time keeping up with Asia. The game went sort of like this. And Asia won! Now there was a lot of trash talk during this game. It's just what they do when you play basketball. And Cameron was upset because now Asia took his balls right in front of everybody. He's no longer a man because he lost a game of basketball. <laughs> Then he had this idea. If he couldn't play with balls on the court, he'd play with balls back in prison. So he got his kid, he got his brother, and then he took them home. Now, from my understanding, Asia stayed nearby, so she actually went home, which is like right down the street. Her and another friend got a TV, they hooked it up outside, and they started watching football. All the while, Cameron was getting hot because he wanted to play with balls better. So he pulled up at Asia's house, and without saying a word, he shot her four times. The same girl that ate with him. The same girl that used to answer his phone calls. The same girl that put money on his books while he was in jail. He's so pathetic. He's been arrested, but as far as I can tell, there's not been a trial date or a sentencing yet. So, <sighs> enjoy balls in prison, Cameron. Crazy, right?